Praise the Lord. I have some very powerful truths to share with you this afternoon. Some powerful truths. If you'll really pay attention, I believe it'll bring some real freedom in your spiritual walk with the Lord. Some real freedom. James chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word. I mean, you know, Jesus came to deliver us. He came to set the captives free from the condemnation of the law where we were held, right? I want to speak to you about the royal law of liberty. The royal law of liberty. Or the liberty of the kingdom or the law of the kingdom, which is liberty. Amen. Let's open in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, that you have not sent your Son into this world to condemn, but that through truth and grace to redeem a people for your name, that you would be glorified in this earth and for time and eternity through a people that love you more than anything, more than anyone. We ask, Lord, that you bless this message, anoint it, and bless and anoint those that hear the truth of this word. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. James chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. If ye fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, that's how strict the law is, you keep the whole law and offend in one point, he is guilty of all. You still want to try to keep the law of God, people? You offend in one point, you're guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do. As they that shall judge be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have mercy without mercy. Is that what it says? For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. I mean, no, this is the heart of the law. This is God's heart, mercy. It's all about mercy, showing mercy. God said, I will be merciful to those that show mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So those that don't show mercy will have judgment without mercy. Think about that. 
and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Wow. That's powerful. If you don't show mercy, God's going to judge you without mercy. But if you show mercy and are a merciful person, God will show mercy to you. Amen? And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Mercy triumphs. It triumphs. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters? We should not be seeking anything but God's mercy. That's what every single one of us should be seeking. More mercy. We don't deserve His grace, but mercy is something entirely different. I may know that. Grace is the free gift. Mercy is God's pity. It's something beyond. Mercy rejoiceth against judgment. In other words, what God is saying is, who are you to condemn what I have shown mercy upon? In other words, God is saying, I have the last word. It's my choice. I'm God. Amen? That's what God's saying. Who are you that condemns? Amen? God says, it's my choice. I mean, no, it's always God's choice. That's what this is all about. It's about choosing God's choice. It's about resting in God's choice. Praise the Lord. Will you choose God's choice? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints, and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then, that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, as we are without, yet without sin. Listen, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. But are we obtaining grace when we come to the throne of grace only? That we can find grace to help in a time of need. What is it we're obtaining? Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace 
that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. God gives us the grace to come to his throne to obtain mercy, to find grace. In other words, there's more grace. He giveth more grace. But you got to seek him for that. It's his word that triumphs over all. It's his choice. Amen? Hallelujah. So are you going to choose to live under the law? Or are you going to choose to be chastened? To be examined? To be investigated? To be chastened? Amen. Chastened. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. This is called interrogation, people. Amen. Hallelujah. His word. His word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. He'll interrogate you not to condemn you. Amen? But to free you. To deliver you from the law. From condemnation. In other words, got to get down to the heart of the matter. Praise the Lord. Do we really understand what this verse is talking about in conjunction with his rest? It all comes down to the intents and the motive of our heart, people. That's the law of liberty. That's the royal law. That's the law of God of his kingdom. Comes down to motive, intent. Amen? Amen? That's what God's judging. What is the intents of your heart? What is the motive of your heart? And only his word can reveal that. You know, the scripture says, whatsoever man thinketh, so is he. But what do you really think about yourself? The heart's desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's desperately wicked. Deceitful above all things. But God's word can get to the bottom of it. I may know that. Amen? God does not scourge. He doesn't examine. He does not investigate his babes or his children when they first become children. So as you develop, as you're growing up, as you're coming into sonship, you will never become a son of God if you do not endure chastening and scourging. God scourges every son whom he receives. Amen. This is where you experience freedom, people. Liberty. You know what God's saying? He's saying, if I justify you, it doesn't matter what man says to you. It doesn't matter what the devil says. If I give you my peace, if I give you my joy, if I give you my victory, why does it matter what anybody else says? So we should be seeking God. We should be seeking to be justified by God, brothers and sisters. Even Job said that. Ah, I'm, I'm looking for his seat. I'm looking for his throne. Then I will empty out my complaints to him. Job said, I will be free from my judge. Job had enough understanding to know that all that mattered is, what does God think about me? 
Amen. And every one of us have got to come to that place of rest, people. It doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't even matter what we think about ourselves within our own selves as far as our own judgment. Amen. It takes the truth through grace to make us free, people. Amen. Talking to you about the royal law of the kingdom, the royal law, royalty, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, The law of God's kingdom is liberty. Hallelujah. It's not condemnation. It's freedom. It's liberty. The very thing that this world is losing. Their freedom, their liberty. Amen. But God has not called you and I to bondage. He's called us unto liberty. How many know that? Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, you have been not, you have not been called unto, or excuse me, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love, serve one another. Amen. By love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The royal law. As thyself. How do you love yourself? That's important. If you don't love yourself with godly love, you can't love your neighbor properly. You got to learn God's love for you so that you can, in turn, love others with his love. Amen? This all comes down to love, God's love. Amen. And you'll never enter into his rest or even into his kingdom if you do not come through the truth. Amen. You've got to endure chastening I may know that you've got to endure chastening you've got to be examined you know a soft examination or a soft interrogation doesn't involve beatings doesn't involve scourgings But you can find scripture where it says Jesus or even the apostles were examined with scourging. Amen. Aren't you glad that God doesn't want you to physically endure scourgings to be chastened? Amen. You and I, if we're willing, we can be scourged with the truth. Amen. Chastened by the truth of his word. When I was in Bible school, one day the pastor's son was speaking to me. And all he was doing is speaking. But inwardly, I felt like he was whipping me. Like he was beating on me. And I even looked at him and I said that. I says, why are you being so mean? Why are you? He looked at me like, what do you mean mean? I'm just talking. And I thought he had a problem. 
And all along, it was me. God was using his tongue. God was using his ministry through him to scourge me. And I'm going to say to this to you folks, don't ever expect that you're going to be placed as a son of God if you do not endure scourging. Amen. If you can't handle the truth, you'll never be a son of God. If you can't handle the truth, the truth that searches out the very intent of your heart, what is the motive? What is the intent? What is the thoughts? Amen? Discerning the thoughts, the intents of the heart. This is how you enter into God's rest. Praise the Lord. Do you really want to cease from your own labors? Do you really want to enter into his rest? Then you've got to endure chastening and scourging. Praise the Lord. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. When I woke up this morning, the scripture the Lord gave me was what manner of love, and I really had a whole message for this, but I'll just give to you this one verse for now that goes along with this thought. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Amen? You look up this word manner in the original Greek, it means interrogation, chastening, scourging. Behold what manner of love God chastens only those he loves and scourges every son whom he receives. Now, if we endure chastening and scourging, it's that you and I are partakers of his divine nature, partakers of his holiness. Amen? Praise the Lord. I have a whole message I'm putting together dealing with this very subject. But I... Just thought I would add this in at the end of this message. Behold, now are we the sons of God. Not babes, not children, but sons. Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, like him. For we shall see him as he is. Do you have that hope? Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Amen. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Praise the Lord. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Amen. Not like the world, people. God the Father is not going to let you get by not going to let you get away with things amen he's going to scourge you straighten you out discipline you train you up he's preparing you for greatness to sit with him 
in his throne to rule, to reign with him. You think you're just going to sit with him in his throne, going to rule and reign with him in eternity, and you're not going to endure discipline, training, scourging? Amen. What an example Jesus was at the cross. His whole life was an example, but he never opened his mouth. Amen. He didn't scream out when they were scourging him. Praise the Lord. You didn't hear flesh. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We sing the songs to be like Jesus, but do we even know what that means? I'm going to say this, people. Not everybody's going to sit with him in his throne. If you do not allow God to destroy that flesh, that carnal nature in you, you're not going to sit with him in his throne. Amen? Even David said he was consumed with the blow of God's hand. See, I don't think, I don't think a lot of God's people even know who God is when it comes to his fatherly love. When it comes to chastening and scourging. Very few, if any, know the Father when it comes to scourging. Uh, to be separated from this world. To be separated from the flesh. Amen? To be made righteous. To be made like unto him. To be like him. Not to be weak, squeamish, cowardly, but to be like Jesus. Pilate had seen many. He had seen many male factors being scourged. You know, he saw that. But when he saw Jesus being examined and scourged, he saw him there after being scourged and he said, Behold the man. He recognized. He recognized there was something different. How many men he had seen before him being flogged, being scourged, He said, there's something different about this one. This is beyond human. This is not natural. Never cried out. Never screamed. And I'm sure that Hollywood loved to put a movie out there showing Jesus screaming like a little girl. Mocking him, making fun of him but he never opened his mouth. You want to talk about self-control? This is something we don't understand in the flesh, people. Amen. Totally consecrated and totally delivered. Totally delivered, free. Not afraid of death. Really indestructible. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. That's his power, people. That's his grace. How could the disciples, when they became apostles and they were scourged, they returned rejoicing after being beaten with rods? They rejoiced. 
because they were accounted worthy to be beaten with rods for his namesake. How is that? History supports that the saints of God during the inquisitions of the Catholic Church, their abusive, wicked, abusive examinations and interrogations trying to get God's people to recant being burned alive. And history supports that they sang as they were going up in flames. How do you do that? How do you sing when you should be screaming? There is a power greater than any power of this world. Death is swallowed up in victory, swallowed up in life. The world doesn't understand that, and sadly, many of God's people don't understand it. Fear not, brothers and sisters. Amen? Fear not. For our king has conquered. Amen? He has conquered all. Praise the Lord. There's an effectual door open to us. Praise the Lord. Abundantly into his kingdom. Praise the Lord. Translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God. God bless you.